Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Python for Data Science program for Data Science Essentials program. Today, we are going to understand important scientific libraries of data science, which we can use using Python programming language. Objectives of today's talk is to get started with reading data from the source. This data could be industrial data. For today's demonstration, I will be taking a data set which we have uh, used yesterday. So we have, we got started with a data set with student marks and student study hours. So uh, I'm going to tell you that suppose if we have data available in an external data set format, like a comma separated value, how we are going to read that into Python and how we are going to process it. Followed by, we'll quickly switch to a data set with some more number of observations, like around 500, 600 observations would be there. And there will be multiple variables, which we will be considering. And we are going to perform data science and machine learning using that. So let's go for it. To proceed further, let me just share my screen with you all. So I've started the share. So objectives of today's session, let me just quickly let you all know that what we will be performing. So objectives of the day would be, first of all, we're going to read data from a source into a 2D data structure. Okay. So the data structure which I'm talking about here is data frame. So you're going to understand what a data frame is in as far as official definition is concerned, data frame is a two dimensional size mutable data structure, which you're going to use for data analysis. Now, when we read data from source, what could be a source? So source file could be a comma separated value file. It could be an HTML file. It could be a JSON file. It could be an SQL table, etc. There could be any number of data source formats. Okay. So Pandas is capable of reading from multiple sources and it reads the value into a two dimensional size mutable data frame. So we can do that. So the library which you will encounter today, you will be using Pandas library. Pandas library is to give you data structures, let's say data frames. And we will be using another library. This will be matplotlib which is to generate graphs. We'll be using this. Moreover, if time allows, we'll also use sklearn, which is going to provide us scientific equations. We're going to use scientific equations for data science. So these three libraries we will be using. In order to get started, we will be using our tool collab.research.google.com. And the data set which we will be taking today is available on this website, hackwither.in slash systec slash housing modified dot CSV. So I'm going to share the data with you all. Okay, so I'm sending the data link on a chat message to everyone. So you all can quickly open this data set and we will be processing this data set today in our talk. Okay, so that will be the data set. Before that, I will also use uh, a dummy data set when we begin this session today. So this dummy data set will be a student hours and marks data set. So this will be in motivation so as to make you understand how you can quickly form a data set and how you can quickly use it for analysis purpose. And moreover, if you already have a readily available data available, so you can also read that from source and you can perform analysis on it. So both ways will do. So step one will be working with dummy data set. In step one, we'll work with, work with student data set. And in step two, we will work with housing modified data set. Okay, so both the data sets we will be utilizing. Now, so let me take you 
to the next level of using python programming for data science now so when i talk about using python programming for data science what does that mean using python programming for data science so this means we will be using python programming and we will be using this machine learning framework the machine learning framework which we use today will be knowledge discovery process okay and this will let us know this will give us following stages for data collection data selection data pre processing data transformation data mining interpretation and evaluation so these are the steps which you will be performing using python and you will grab knowledge so we are going to do this let's get started yeah we will yes so uh, i have got a message from wendy so she is asking uh, will we be using jupyter notebook yesterday's file or we are creating a new file so i will create a new file i will create a new data set the data set will be similar to the data which we used yesterday so we are going to recreate it so don't worry about it we are going to recreate a new notebook we are going to recreate a new data set and we'll proceed further now so let me just quickly uh, give it to you so what i am going to do so step 1 let's get started with today's objectives so steps 1 let's create a student hours and marks comma separated value file okay you can use using microsoft excel you can use so let me just quickly create a data set file and you all will be able to download it so i'm sharing it through the drive so let me just create that step so i go here i go to drive.google.com on this drive i would like to create a new comma separated value file just in order to show you how we create files and how we use it so let's say i'm going to create a new google sheet and this is going to be a blank spreadsheet okay we are going to create a blank spreadsheet i will share this file with you all so don't worry if you do not have a google drive account and if you face any difficulty in creating that so you can avoid that i'm going to give it give the access of the same file to all of you okay so what i'll have is if i talk about this file so we'll quickly start with student hours and marks data set okay or let's call it as student data set i'm going to call it a name student data set now within this student data set i will be having like a few values and let's say the first column will be let's say hours studied okay the number of hours a student studied and marks scored let's say i have these two columns i hope you all are able to see that so i'm going to add up some random values like a student study for 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours 7 hours 8 hours and 9 hours for example like that okay so i have like till 10 hours and he scored 34 54 let's say 67 um 73 somewhat like this 78 79 then i get like 89 92 95 somewhat like this so i've got a data set available here now what we can do is i can give you a public url to this data set okay so let's say we have a sample data set available 
and I go to drive, I go to publish this document to the web so that this will be publicly available to all the people. So let's publish to the web. Okay. And I'm going to give you a link of the entire sheet as a comma separated value file. Okay. You can also export it into a tab separated, a PDF file or a HTML web page. So you can convert it into any form, but today we will be considering comma separated values format. So let me just do that. I publish it here. So it asks me to confirm, are you sure you want to publish the selection? I say, okay. And I publish it. So I'm sending you a copy of this so that you all can quickly download that or else you will be able to access it directly from the server. I can also upload it to a web server. So let me just quickly check if we can read this file directly. So yes, we got that file. And let me just quickly check the download link of that file. I'm sharing the address uh, of this file with all the participants on the chat box so that you guys can download it on your local machines as well. And give me one more moment so that I quickly publish it onto, onto a server from where you all can read it easily. Now, so let's say I've got this file. Initially, I will check if I can read this with collaboratory directly. Okay, so you need to give me a moment so that I can check it if I can read this file directly from collaboratory. So I go to collab.research.google.com. If I'm able to read this file directly from this link, that is fine. Otherwise, I'm going to upload it onto a new domain or, or to a new URL from where you can download it. Okay, now, so we'll get started with a new Python 3 notebook. And this Python 3 notebook will include the codes for Python for data science. So you all can get started with a new notebook. I'm going to rename this notebook as 11 Jan 2019 Python uh, Data Science Essentials. Science Essentials Canada. Okay. So we got an IPY and we file like this. And let me just quickly check if I can read it. So that's uh, for me to check if I can read it appropriately, then we can continue. Otherwise, I will give you another link from where you can download this file. Okay. So uh, to read the data from source, we use pandas library. Okay. So I import pandas as PD and I run it. <clears throat> Using pandas library, I hope everybody is able to see the font. Font size is fine for all the participants. Okay, so I have got pandas created. I've got a pandas object. Using this pandas object, we will be able to read the file. So in pandas, we have multiple read functions. So what you can do is, you can read from the clipboard, you can read from comma separated values, you can read an Excel file, you can read the feather file, you can also read HDF, HTML, JSON, message pack, pickle, SAS, SQL queries, SQL table, Stata. So there are so many options. You can read from different different source of data and you can put this data into a data frame. So uh, as of today, what we will be doing, we are using this function read CSV to read the comma separated value files from a source and use that or store it into a data frame and then process it. So I got a chat method. Let me just quickly check. How did you uh, get drop down menu of all functions? Yeah, I tell you. So now in case if you would like to see a menu like this, okay? So if, if you if you want to have a menu like this, which, which I get, so what you can do is you can quickly use the tab key. 
so it can auto suggest okay so let me just share tab key is used for auto suggest okay using objects so you need to type in name of the object let's say the object is pd i would like to explore all the functions which are available inside pd i can use dot scope resolution so when i use scope resolution and when i put tab key now so i get all the functions inbuilt which i can access using pd object okay if i type any keyword so it tries to give me suggestions with the relevant keyword so when i type in read it suggests me all the operations where read is available all the functions where read feature is available so we can read from clipboard csv excel feather fwf gbq hdf to do this to get the suggestion you also need to run this cell because when your pandas object is created only then you will be able to get the suggestion okay so it's it's a good idea that you write the statement first this statement you execute the cell and then if you want to explore all the functions available within the pd object you can access them using the tab key okay now so i go for read csv function and just let me quickly check if i can read the data set from here so if i can do that then i will quickly give you access to this otherwise i will publish the document on some other domain so just give me a moment so that i can quickly check so i just put in i've just put in the address here just to check if i can read this file i try to store the values of the output into a data frame and let me just check the data frame if we can read it yeah so we can read it so that's great so we can directly read from the source from google drive so that's fine now so let me just quickly explain you so what we have got so now uh, what we'll do we have a read csv function so you have this function read csv and i would like to quickly show you the help of the read csv function first i hope you all are able to follow let me know with the chat if you all are able to follow great so now what we'll do we are going to read the comma separated value files i have taken a help on it what this function can do for us so this function can read comma separated file into a data frame and that's what our objective is to do that it offers you the syntax okay and you see that this syntax has one permanent argument which is required you need to give name of the file or the file path or the buffer from where you want to read and there are so many optional parameters also okay so one such optional parameter is when you read the file the default separator would be a comma so in case let's say if you have a tab separated data you can also use the separator as tab and there are many more like delimiters headers would you like to read through the index columns so there are so many features which you can explore as soon as we progress further but as of now i'm going to provide one argument which is the compulsory the the necessary argument which we need to give to read csv function so that it can read from the source so here if you see what is the meaning of file path so if you go down you can understand all the parameters which are available and there is a definition given for all the parameters so file path parameter is going to be a string str stands for string it could be a string it could be a path or it could be any object with a read method okay it could be a file handle or it could be a string input output this string can also be a url so as we are using a url of the data set which is hosted on google drive so we are directly going to read the data from the drive and we are going to pass the url the url is going to be in the string format so we are going to use this string 
So you can use double quotes to create a string, and then you can quickly push your. Uh, you can quickly, you can quickly push the URL where your data is available. So I'm going back to my sheet, my drive sheet. I see comma separated value file. I right click and copy that. Okay. So I've got this data, and now I go to collaboratory. I paste that here. So that's the file path from where I'm going to read the data. Till now, is it clear to all the participants? We have used a read CSV function, which asked me a file path from where I want to read. It told me it has to be a string, so I use this double quote, and it told me that this could be a URL. So I have supplied the URL from docs.google.com, which is the direct URL to my data set, which is available on my drive. Okay. So guys, so I hope you got that. So now what we can do is we can read the data set from a URL, and when we read that, we can quickly store that onto a variable. So using the assignment operator equal to, I have stored the output of read CSV function into a data frame. If you want to know what will be the output generated by this read CSV function, so you can quickly go to the bottom and you can quickly check. The result. So if I go to the bottom here, I see the read CSV function is going to result a data frame to us. Okay. So if so if you if you see the type of this DF object is going to be the data frame, or you can also call it as a student data. Okay. So uh, for for you all to understand this easily. let me just call it as data so now what we are going to do we have used pandas library which can give us a data frame we created an object pd for the library using the object we executed a function read csv we have provided a file path from a url that is from docs.google.com this is the public data set which we have created using google drive and the output is going to be a data frame which we are going to store it into data okay now once we get that let's quickly run this cell and let the data store into this data frame object df uh, data so now once the cell executed successfully i've got my data stored into this object if you want to check the type of data you can quickly execute a print statement like this let's say i'm i'm going to type it somewhat like this the data type of data variable is and i can quickly type in type and data so you can quickly check what is the data type so the data type is a class and the class is of data frame type okay so now you can see that the data which is created after reading the csv uh, after reading from this path using read csv function is a data frame okay so we cross checked it that we got a data frame in return now we can use this data frame for analysis so if i go to next cell and check the contents of data variable so you can quickly type in data and you can run the cell so when you run the cell you can quickly see the observations which are available okay so the observations which we had on the student data set file which were here for your reference so which we created on the student data set a 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 they are like now visible here okay you can see that so this is the data which we have read from the google drive and now it is available to us for analysis have you all done till now just confirm me on the chat if you all have successfully read this data from drive to your google collaborator okay 
So Hussein got, Vinny got, Sanika has done it. Very nice, great. Now, so let's just proceed with the next step. So now once we have got the data, what we can do? So we can go for exploratory analysis, okay? So what we can do with data? What can you do with data is a big question. So answer to that question could be, so you can do the following. What happened in data? You can do this. So if you do this, you have to perform statistics. Okay. Second thing you can do with data, why did it happen? Okay. So you can perform data science or analysis. Then what next you can do, you can also do what will happen in future. So that's machine learning. And if you say, how do you make the best happen? If you do that, so that's deep learning. We also call this reinforcement learning. Okay, reinforcement learning. So we are going to do that. We are going to execute these four steps. Okay, in the course, the objective is to execute these four things. So here we start with the first one. What happened in data? Okay. To do that, the first thing which I generally do, I check the shape of data. Checking the shape of the data means I would like to know how many observations and columns I have. Okay. I need to know how many rows versus columns I have in my data because that will help me understand how big my data is and what analysis methods I should, I would be using in order to get the appropriate results. To do that, using the data, there is an attribute known as shape. Okay. There is this option known as shape. So you can use shape and what it can do. So shape is a property. Okay. Shape is a property of the object data and it can return a tuple representing the dimensionality of the data frame. So as you all know what a tuple is, you all have done various operations on tuple. So you are going to receive a tuple when you check the shape and it is going to represent the dimensional, the dimensions of the data frame. So now if I quickly check back, if I do this print statement and if I do something, uh, show me the dimensions slash shape of data. So I can do like data dot shape. So when I do that, I get an output somewhat like this. So shape of the data is nine comma two. So which means I have nine observations. This is the number of rows. I have nine observations and I have two columns. So this is your C. C stands for the columns, which we have. So we have nine rows and two columns. Okay. Now, since we have two columns, the task is very easy for us. We can quickly compare these two columns and we can find out if they are related to each other or not. So let's do that. I hope you all have reached till here. Everyone has reached till here. So the first thing is I got to know about my data that my data has nine observations and I have two columns in it. Okay. So now generally what next I do, I check the columns. I check the name of the columns in data. So as to identify what I have. Okay. So to do this, I can do, I can quickly do this names 
of columns in data set so to do that i use the data frame object data and i use this property known as columns okay so i use this property columns so before that let me just quickly show you help of columns data dot columns so that you can understand what it offers you <clears throat> so when we run data dot columns so what you're going to get you're going to get an immutable n dimensional array implementing an ordered sliceable set and the basic object storing access labels for all the pandas objects so what columns will do column is going to give you an ordered sliceable set and it is going to store the access labels so access will be your columns and all the column names will be displayed to you so you can individually run it like data dot columns and if you run you will get a list of the columns which are available within your data set okay so we get hours studied and we get marks scored so these are the two columns which are available in our in our data set okay so let me just quickly use this print statement so that we can see that in much beautiful manner so name of columns in data set are hours studied and marks scored so we have two columns now so what i can do is with this information with nine observations and with two columns and the two columns are representing hours studied and marks scored what i can do is i can now compare them okay i can compare each other so the third step which i generally do compare all the variables okay compare all the variables to find influences okay influencer means the variables who are responsible or who are influencing other variables either positively or negatively okay or else you can also consider this term as identify correlation among variables so i have two ways to do it the first way i can visually correlate the second way is i can correlate mathematically correlate using a mathematical formula using maths like using pearson kendall or spearman methods so there are certain algorithms there are certain equations using which we can also calculate correlations using the following methods like pearson kendall and spearman now so the first thing which i will do is i will go for visual comparison of columns which you can also call it as variables in data set okay and to do that what i generally do is i make a plot on the data frame let's say i have the data frame as data and i make a plot on it okay so i can directly make a plot on a data frame and if you want to see the usability of the method i can quickly explain that to you so if we talk about the data plot you can plot a data wherein you can provide variables to represent on x axis variable to represent on y axis if you do not provide any variable it is going to plot in comparison to all the variables which are available within your data set okay by default you are going to get a line plot and there are certain other things which you will get to know so data frame plotting is a method using which you can make a line plot and there are many other options like you can make a line plot you can create a scatter plot you can create a hex bin plot and there are many more options so what it is going to do it is going to make plot of data frame using matplot library so using this library matplot data frame is going to make a plot of 
among the variables which are there. So let's just go for it and make a plot. So when I plot it, let's see what we get. Okay. So when I plot, you can see that I've got a graph somewhat like this. Okay. I have got one variable which represents zero to eight. Okay. And there is a second variable which shows me marks studied and our score. So the blue line here, this area is known as legends. We call it as legends. I hope you all already know this. We call it as legends. Okay. And this one is your line plot. This is your line one. This is your line two. So our study is represented by this line. Then let's say we have data from zero to eight. Okay. This is the data which is available. And then what we have is, so this, this is represented with respect to the Y axis. And then you have this green line for marks studied uh, for marks code. And this line represents marks code. Now you can see that you can compare both of them because the scale of both the variables is different. Scale for marks is from 30 to 100, whereas scale for our study is from 2 to 10. So there is a difference between this scale. So we have to perform certain pre-processing techniques and transformation techniques so that we, we make the data prepared for analysis. So what we are going to do, you have to understand that. Okay. So if it is clear till now, please confirm me so that I can proceed further. And if you all have got this graph, just confirm me. So if you have all, if you all have got this data plot, just confirm me. And we will proceed to the meaningful steps as soon as you progress. Let's go for some meaningful steps. Okay, so Hussein got the graph, Sanika got the graph, and Wendy have you got the graph? By the time, if anybody has any questions, you you can ask your questions to us. You can also ask your questions on Facebook Live. Dama said, if there is any question, you can repeat the questions with us so that we can address the participants. In case if there is any question on the watch party or on the comments, we can quickly answer them. Okay. Now, so let's say you have made a plot, but this plot is not meaningful as such because there are two different lines and they are represented on different scales. So we cannot compare each other. There is no meaning of this graph as of now. So we have to perform something more meaningful so that we can analyze what's happening in the data. Okay. Now to do that, let's proceed to the next cell and let's go for something meaningful. So now what I want is, I want to create a correlation among variables. Okay. I need to calculate correlation among variables. So your data frame offers us a function known as the core C O double R. So what this core function can do, this core function can compute pairwise correlation of columns. So let's say if you have hundreds of columns, you can quickly compare all those hundred columns with each other in a pairwise format. Okay. So that you can do. So let's say we have 20 columns, we have 30 columns. And if we have to compare each column with all the other columns, so df data dot correlation can do that in a second for us. And we can quickly compare that. Okay. Now the default method with which correlation will be computed is Pearson method. In case, if you want to change the method, there are three more methods available apart from standard correlation coefficient. You can use Kendall, you can use Spearman. These are two methods which you can also use for computation of correlation. Apart from that, you can also specify minimum number of observations required per pair of columns to have a valid result. But as of now, since we are very small data, so I'm not defining any minimum number of observations. But let's say if we have like data of 
thousands of values so we can we can take up some minimum value like we can take up like 200 values and we can take a correlation on the basis of 200 values okay so that you can do so that that you can do so as to get more uh, detailed and specific correlation values now what it is going to return in return correlation is going to return you an object of data frame type so when we talk about data frame it is a two dimensional size mutable so the output of correlation is going to be two dimensional on rows we are going to have columns and on x on x axis we will have columns on y axis we will have columns so we can compare each other diagonally so what is the meaning of my statement let me quickly show you so when we execute data dot or with the default method psn so we get this so we get this two dimensional data frame wherein you can see that this is a y axis where your hours studied is compared to all the columns available in the data frame so hours studied itself since both the variables are same so we say if hours studied increases there is 100% probability that hours studied is going to increase so that's like fine that's pretty common but now when i compare hours studied with marks scored so it shows me that if our studied increases there is 94% probability that mark score is going to increase so there is a positive correlation okay so there is a very there is a positive correlation between mark score and hours studied can you can you observe that are you all able to observe that that there is a positive correlation among our studied and marks scored so now this is like one reason we got to know from the data so we got to know that if you study for more number of hours then it is more likely that we can score more marks this is the statement we can draw after analysis of the data okay so as of now you can see there are certain information which you have got with respect to the student uh, so what what we are going to do so you have got this correlation and you can see that mark scored is 94% correlated to hours studied so there is a thumb rule in data science there is a thumb rule and let me just type that thumb rule for you so the thumb rule is if a variable is 0.8 plus correlated then we consider we consider it for prediction of response variable okay and you can also call it as independent variable let's say there is an independent variable which is 80% or above correlated with the response variable then you can consider it for prediction you cannot ignore it because there is a very strong influence and that independent variable is most likely helpful in prediction of the response variable it may also be possible there could be like 100 variables and every variable contributes like 20% so you have to consider all the variables but in case if there is a variable which is 80% and above correlated then you cannot ignore it because it is highly influencing the response variable okay so now what i say is if i give you a general statement that let's say i want to predict the mark scored of a person okay so with mark scored our study is highly correlated so i can use this independent variable which can help me in prediction of marks i can draw the statement after this correlation data frame okay now is it clear till now shall we proceed if there is any question you can please ask me now what we do so we have got a correlation you can also draw correlation matrix visually so this was a mathematical representation of correlation in case if you want to draw a visual representation 
of correlation then what you can do is you can import stats models dot api okay there is a library known as stats model within that library we have a package known as api and i create an object of that api as sm stats models is an api openly available on internet you can you can quickly import that in python and you can use it if you want to have a quick definition of what stats model api is i can i can quickly show you <coughs> stats models so stats models is a library in python which is a third party library and it is generally used for statistics okay so that's available over here stats model is a python module that provide classes and functions for the estimation of many different statistic model as well as for conducting statistic test and statistical data exploration so we use this api stats model okay i hope this is clear to all the participants why am i using because i have already told you in the start that we have to perform four steps and we are doing this what happened in data so to identify what happened in data i have to perform statistics on data and one library stats model api is available for python which can help us in performing statistics on the data available now so if i take you to the next next level so here we have stats model api let me just quickly create the object of stats model now using this there is a class known as graphics using which we can generate graphs okay statistics by stats model provides you a graphics class using which we can create various graphs there are n number of graphs we can draw but as of now my requirement is to draw a correlation plot so there is a function known as plot correlation since we have mathematically checked the correlation but this time i want to show you the co correlations graphically as well because at, at the moment we have only two variables so it was very easy for us to compare mathematically but consider 2000 variables in a data set or like 300 variables in a data set it is going to be very difficult to compare that data frame and to calculate the value so in that case you need to have a graph which can help you quickly identify the influencing factors or the influencing variables among in the data available in the data is that clear okay so we are going to plot correlation and let me just quickly show you what this correlation plot can do for you so if you use graphics plot correlation it is going to plot correlation of many variables in a tight color grid so you are going to get a color grid and that color grid is going to show you which factor is highly influencing with a dark color and which factors are negatively influencing okay so there will be two color sets if a variable is influencing another variable with highly positive correlation then you are going to get a dark color if the correlation is weak you are going to get a little light color so let me just show you how we are going to do that so for this you need to pass a variable known as d cor so d cor is nothing but the correlation matrix which is a square two dimensional array so if you remember we have already made that two dimensional array above here so this was the two dimensional array which we created using data dot cor function so what we are going to do we are going to use this correlation matrix we are going to pass it as a parameter to this function so it is going to get the values and we are going to give names of the columns so that we can represent it on represent the names on x axis and y axis for the comparisons okay apart from that there is one more option you can provide title and you can also pass color maps and various other things so what next we are going to do apart from the data frame 
apart from the correlation matrix we are also going to pass a list of strings which is going to act as labels on the horizontal axis if you pass nothing if you have not given anything then matplot will take default integers on the x axis so it's a it's a good idea that you pass names of the columns okay then you can also pass names on the y axis so this will be label for the vertical axis and if not given the same names for x names will be reused so in case if you have not provided a name for y axis then automatically the names you have taken for x axis will also be represented on y so let me just show you how we are going to do that and we are going to give a title to the correlation plot now so let's just go for it let's do that so we are here for plotting the correlation now to plot the correlation what we do i'm going to take in my data and i'm going to plot the correlation of all the columns which are available and my graph is going to generate okay let's run it so when i run this statement you see i get a correlation matrix like this okay let me just save that for you save it as okay and now let me show you <clears throat> so here is the quick representation of the correlation matrix which i have got so if you can see here on the left hand side what i have is i have this color bar available okay by default the title is correlation matrix you can change it by providing the title parameter then you can see that we have a graph here so one represents high correlation value and blue color represents negative highly negative correlation value zero here represents no correlation there is no correlation among the variables okay <clears throat> so if you see at this time on y axis there is no label and on x axis there is no label so it is very difficult for me to identify what does this matrix want to say so what i want is i want x names here okay i will get the x names here so that i can compare that comparing the x names and comparing the y names i'm going to do that so let me just do that for you okay so that looks pretty bad i'm so sorry for writing with a draw uh let's let's go for it okay so now what am i going to do i need to put in x names as well as i need to put in y names so that we can compare what graph we have got so let me just quickly take you back to the to the code here so what i want is the first thing i would like to have the title of the graph okay now so set the title and x names on the graph on the correlation matrix correlation matrix let's say so let me just do it so what i'll do i will use that graphics dot plot correlation i'm going to pass data dot correlation okay apart from this let me just comment the previous line so that i can quickly pass the names properly now the next feature which i need to give will be the names which i want to represent on the x axis and i have al already given you the options to do that so you can use data dot columns so that you get name of all the columns which are available okay so from the data you are going to get all the column names and they will be represented on x axis okay and since i'm not providing y names so automatically the same names will be represented on the y axis also okay of the correlation plot and i want to provide a title and let's call it as correlation of student marks and uh let's say i would like to call it as correlation something like that okay now so i got i got a statement like this and let me just regenerate the graph now so when i regenerate the graph 
you see i get the title and i get hours studied and marks scored hours studied and marks scored somewhat like that okay can you see that hours studied marks scored and then you get hours studied and marks scored so can you see that have you all got the graph have you all got the graph now so since there were only two variables yeah yeah it's printing twice because uh because there is certain problem with matplot library actually they forgot to patch it so due to the stats model api it print it is printed twice so don't worry about it yeah i can quickly show you the graph so sanika is asking me to show the graph uh, show the code again so that's the code which i have written yeah so what i did i used the stats model graph a stat model object i used the class graphics i have used the function plot correlation for the function the first argument which i passed was the correlation matrix which we generated which is an n dimensional array which is a squared two dimensional array so which we calculated using data dot correlation and we have got using data dot correlation you are going to get a table somewhat like this which we calculated above okay so you are going to get this table wherein you can see that we have like a percentage of 94.9 that is 95% the relation between marks scored and hours studied okay now so when i plotted that and when i have passed column names so that the column names are represented on x axis and since i have not passed any y names so the same x names are repeated on y axis also and i have set a title correlation now when i plot the graph i see with the color sequence let me just save that and i can show you on a on a new page here so you get a correlation somewhat like this so if you see the color code here so if we compare our studied with marks scored we get this blue color and if i compare this blue color so this blue color is somewhat matching like this here yeah. so this graph tells me there is 95% correlation among our studied and mark score now you're going to understand the utility of correlation matrix when you will be having multiple variables okay because at that point of time it would be very difficult to compare it individually so at that point correlation matrix will be very helpful so for the sake of completeness i have told you how you can also plot the correlation matrix of the variables which are available in your data set i hope this is clear how many of you have got the graphs just let me know so that we can proceed further yeah so uh, i've got the graph from sanika i've got the graph with hussain uh wendy have you are you done with your graph is it done samit sir you you are also done with the graph okay yeah okay everybody has got the graph now so that's that's great now let's go to the next step so with correlation what you got to know with correlation you got to know if you want to predict okay let's say this is the current status which we have got that uh, if if i ask this question what happened in data okay and the second question why did it happen okay so what you can say is 
if I plot it like this, let me just give you a visual explanation to that. Visual explanation to both answers. Let me just do that for you. So I'm going to import a graph because when I, whenever I say visual explanation, I talk about graph. So I'm going to take matplotlive.pyplot and I'm going to create an object as PLD. So I'm using the library matplot library. I'm using the class Python plot. I have created an object for Python plot and using the plot, I'm going to create a graph. We have also used, we have already used this function yesterday. So I hope that's not going to be new to you. We can plot lines and markers using this function. And what you can do is you can plot X and Y using the default line style and color, or else you can also pass different color schemes and the line schemes, the marker schemes. Okay. Now, so let me just quickly show you how am I going to plot that. So the first thing which I'm going to plot will be my data frame. Uh, say I, I have to plot X and Y. So let me just give do one thing for you. So I'm going to access my data. And from this data, as you already know that we have column names, so you can directly access student, uh, sorry, hours studied. So you can call it somewhat like this data dot hours studied dot values. So what it is doing. So we are convert list to numeric. Okay. You can convert the list to numeric. Moreover, if you want, you can try that without values also, but in case if you get any error that could not represent the data, then you can always convert it into uh, arrays using values. And I'll show you that. So I'm going to compare our study on X axis and I'm going to, I'm going to use marks code on Y axis and I'm going to make a plot X comma Y. Okay. So when I plot X comma Y, just to show you visual explanation that what happened in data so that you can answer that visually. And let me just put the title. The title will be to let you know what happened in data. And then I will set an X label wherein on X axis, I will have student hours Sorry, hours started and on Y axis, I will have marks scored. Okay. So I'll have a plot like this just to make you understand what happened in data. So from the data I access, hours studied on X axis, marks scored on Y axis. I've made a plot. I have set the title of the plot so that it is more meaningful to the user who is reading the data. And I have represented X axis label and Y axis label. So when I see the graph here, so you got something like that. So if you see what happened in data, uh, actually I cannot identify the accurate marks as of now that, uh, so I should put some scatter points also on the same graph. So to put some scatter points, you can also do one thing. Let's say put scatter points for X versus Y. For this, what am I going to do? I'm going to use plt.scatter and I will pass X and Y. Okay. And now let me run it. So that that will be like more relatable. <clears throat> so when I plot this, so you can see that what I did, I have made a pie plot. I have imported pie plot. I have created an object. I have used hours studied from data on X axis. I have used mark scored on Y axis. Then I have created a line plot. Okay. Then I created a scatter plot so as to show the points wherever X and Y intersects to each other. Then I have set some statements like what happened in data, hours studied, and marks scored. So when I when I show you this graph, 
Okay. So if I show you this graph, now you can see what happened in data. So the data shows me somebody has got certainly like 95 marks. This is one thing which I get to know data. The maximum marks the person got is 95. The minimum marks a person got is something like 34, 35, whatever it is. And I also get to know that if a person has studied for less number of hours, he scored less. And if a person has studied for more number of hours, he scored more. Okay. I got to have these few information out of this representation. And if I ask you mathematically that how much our study is correlated to mark score, you can confidently say it is 95% without fail because you have calculated the correlations also. So now you can say if number of hours studied increases, then there is 95% probability that your marks will also increase. So we got this two information. What happened and why did it happen? So what happened was marks, hours, why happened? It may be because the person who scored maximum mark has studied for long duration of hours. Okay. And the person who has scored less marks has studied for less duration of hours. So we got to know these two answers as of now. So what we did, we have done statistics and we have done data science in order to identify the visual explanations to what happened and the mathematical explanation to why happened and visual explanation to why did it happen? What were the correlated factors which were responsible for more marks? Now, now the question comes, what we can do with this information? So when we have got this knowledge, what am I going to do with it? Okay. How am I going to use this knowledge? That's a big question. Okay. And how I can pass this knowledge to a computer machine. How this is going to reach to the machine. Okay. So machine can only understand mathematics. So you need to represent this knowledge with a mathematical equation. So whatever knowledge you have got, you have to represent it with a mathematical equation and you can set that mathematical equation into a machine so that machine can predict the same as a human is predicting. Okay. So you got to know. So you're understanding what I mean to say. So let me just take you to the next step from here. So now once you've got this data calculated, now what we want to do is you can understand you can do this. What will happen in future? Okay. So if student hours are known, then 95% accuracy, then with 95% accuracy, accuracy, you can predict marks of student which he may score in future you can do that okay so that's what is machine learning that's what is machine learning so in machine learning what exactly we do representation station of knowledge with a mathematical equation equation of highest accuracy and minimum error rates. So this is what we have to achieve. Is that clear? So that's what we are going to do. And we are going to uh, identify what is going to happen in future and how my machine is going to identify that and will be able to predict it till now this is clear to all the participants okay great great so now what we can do is let's say now when you have got this line okay You've got this line. 
Now, how will we proceed to what will happen in future? So for this, let us just refer the document which I have given to you. I'm sharing the link of the document and it is also available here. Uh, let me just quickly type that here. Atmeta.in slash systex slash python machine learning dot pdf. Okay. And I'll write that here. So all the participants can access that from this URL. Moreover, I'm sending the URL on chat to all the participants so that you all can open. Okay, I've shared the link with you. So if you can open the document again, so that I can tell you now how we will proceed further from here when we reach to this stage. So what we do, if you refer to the structure of machine learning, because as of now we came to the third stage that we have to perform machine learning. Okay, so let me just represent the information with you. So when we talk about that now we have to identify what is going to happen in future, we have to perform machine learning. Now machine learning, which one to choose? Should we go for supervised? Should we go for unsupervised? Or should we go for reinforcement learning? So now you need to ask a question with you. Is your data structured? Is your data structured? Which means, is it in rows versus columns? Or it is a text or image or video? So you have to identify what is the type of your data. So if your data is structured, or tabular, then you go for supervised. If your data is unstructured, okay, let's say if it is unstructured, like a web page without any structure, then you go for unsupervised. In case if you have the data for image, video, etc., we go for reinforcement learning. So if you guys can answer me, what kind of data you have? Do we have a structured data? Is our data represented in rows and columns? Okay, so I got a response, yes, structure. So the data which we have is, is structured in nature. So is it clear to everyone? Yes, the data is structured. So now if the data is structured, then you need to consider regression or classification. So what does this mean? Okay. So there could be three types of data which you can have. And let me just quickly type that here on, let me just quickly do that for you. Let me save it. Okay. So when, uh, here is the text. Okay. So if your data or the response variable which you want to predict is a quantity okay if it is a quantity which can be which can be represented in number for example let's say if you want to predict the price price is a quantity let's say if you want to predict the weight weight is a uh, quantity let's say if you want to predict speed speed is a quantity if you want to represent uh, anything like that uh, so that that comes under quantity and in case if you want to represent a category like yes, no, true, false, most likely, somewhat likely, least likely. So those issues comes under category. So generally numbers, if your data is a number, which is a quantity, then you can go for regression. And if you have categorical number or if you have categorical data, if I give you an example, so it could be binary category binary category uh, for example could be yes no okay it could be n category n category could be uh, something like let's say fast medium slow okay or else let's say uh, another example could be something like let's say if you are predicting uh, the context of a user with some accelerometer sensor. So it could be like the context could be walking, the context could be running, 
or the context could be a uh, jumping or uh, or like uh, stare up uh, like that there could be in there could be uh, n number of categories you can predict okay so certain information if you have to predict so if you have a variable which is a category then we perform classification and classification has a pool of algorithms which you are going to understand there are n number of algorithms which you will compare if your data is a quantity then we start with a regression okay so if i give you some example right if you have to predict price if you have to predict speed let's say if you have to predict like uh, weight okay so there could be n number of n number of things you can you can predict it could be like threshold of some ddos packets let's say if you want to make a anti ddos prevention system you can you can do that stuff so like that so now the selection of the algorithm for machine learning depends on what kind of data you have so if we see if we answer this question so yes our data is structured and the dependent variable which we want to predict let's say it is going to be the dependent variable which i want to predict as of now is going to be this uh let me just quickly check back so the data which we have is quantitative in nature and we will be predicting let me just quickly check you there like this so let me just clear clear this for you so that we can we can all we can proceed to the next step now oh, just saved it now i want to clear it i have cleared all the drawings yeah so now so if you were here and if you see the data which is available so what i want to do is i would like to predict my marks on the basis of hours tended so the value which i want to predict is going to be the dependent variable and the value which is responsible to predict the dependent variable is known as independent so my dependent variable or response variable is a quantity so i will be using regression equations for performing prediction okay so if i write that here just to make you all clear so uh, now you have to perform data selection okay which means select response and independent variable variable from data so the first thing you can do the variable which you want to predict okay this is known as dependent or else response variable and the variable which influence influence dependent variable so this influence could be the positive or could be negative so we call it as independent okay so with respect to our data set if we select a dependent variable so that is going to be marks scored we are going to predict marks scored and in case if you want to see the independent variable which is responsible so that is going to be hours studied so using these two variables we can proceed towards prediction of marks so we can use independent variable and we can predict marks on the basis of it is that clear to everyone is it clear now so that's what we can do we can use dependent variables to predict uh, for prediction and you can uh, you can identify since marks scored is a quantity so definitely i will proceed towards regression okay since marks scored is a quantity i will proceed towards regression so how many of you understand regression you tell me okay regression equation so this is the regression equation i hope many of you would have heard about it y is equal to m into x plus c 
okay how many of you have heard about this equation please tell me y is equal to mx plus c i will also explain you about the regression equation what it is so that you can effectively understand it okay so uh, hussein understood it hussein said he has used it i do and sanika not sure if i have okay and wendy have you used regression do you know about what regression is and yeah so you can tell me if if you know regression accordingly uh okay 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 so sh you have done it but in a different context so not using programming fine fine great so i'll i'll give you a quick brief about it that how we can use the regression equation okay so what is the meaning of y is equal to mx plus c let me just quickly represent that with you all so let me save this diagram save image as and let me open that view now if you all can see this graph here on my screen <clears throat> so what we are going to do as i told you that we have to perform machine learning and since the variable which i want to predict is quantitative in nature so i have to go for regression okay now regression equation is y is equal to m into x plus c this is the regression equation now y is something which is represented on the y axis does this make sense the y is a variable which is represented on y axis and then x is a variable which is represented on x axis so this is pretty clear about y and x now let us understand what is m okay let us understand what is this m and what is this c okay we have to understand this y and x we know we have to understand what is m and what is c now let me just quickly type that for you so m is change in y with respect to x the change in y with respect to x is known as m we also call it as slope and we also call it as dy divided by dx so let me just type that here so it is change in y with respect to change in x okay dy by dx now what does that mean so let's say if i draw that for you uh i'll draw a straight line in fact so now let's say let us consider a student who studied for 7 hours and scored somewhat like 79 marks let's consider it. so if you see here if i increase x from 7 to 8 hours you can see that there is an increase in y from 79 to 90 or to 89 somewhat like this can you see that so with respect to change in y dx there is a change in y also with respect to change in x there is a change in y dy by dx we call it as slope okay we call it as slope is that clear this is m now what is c so c is a constant value we also call it as unknown variable okay so we call it as unknown variable c is an unknown variable so c is going to remain constant and what is what do you understand with unknown variable let me just tell you so let's say we are talking about student marks with study but let's consider a scenario there was one student who was actually who uh, who was very smart so he studied just for 2 hours and he is like an extra brilliant student like sumit sir and he scored 89 marks 
so he studied only for 2 hours and he is a genius and he scored 89 marks so this is an unknown variable because we cannot account his geniusness with data moreover it could also be possible that there was one student who was sitting with some cheat sheets with him so he didn't study he he didn't study for any number of hours but scored like 80 80 plus marks because he was having the cheat sheet so there are certain real time things which we cannot account it into a data so okay? you are saying sumit sumit sir had a cheat sheet no no sir i am saying you you are a genius so so there are two ways a person who studies less can also score high marks and uh, with his geniusness so that's like sumit sir and second it could be <laughs> second it could be a person could be having a cheat sheet or anything and he can score like very well so that doesn't relate with how many number of hours he studied so now this thing is known as constant okay so how do we calculate this we calculate this let's say if we try to uh, to make a make a straight line of the model uh, with let's say to relate it somewhat like this let's say we got this line score okay so here you can see that this line somehow intersects here okay so what is going to be c i'm going to tell you so the value of y the value of y which is this point when x was 0 so that is constant that is c because if you see the person did not study for any number of hours even then he scored 49 marks this is because he may be having a cheat sheet so this is an unknown unknown variable which we have not accounted into data so that is c <clears throat> is that clear so can you understand regression so now what we say is let's say if i have the value of x if i have the value of m if i have the value of c then i can predict y okay if i have the value of a student who studied for this number of hours and i have calculated the correlation coefficient i have calculated the constant value so i can predict y okay i'm going to make you understand that uh, with with some more examples till now is it clear any questions till now you can quickly ask me if there is any question i can hold it here so you may be uh, you may be thinking how will we be calculating m how will we be calculating c because there could be like different there could be like different ways here dy by dx would be something else okay in this case in the next case dy by dx here is going to be pretty different so how we are going to calculate it okay so there are certain equations available which has been proved to calculate m and to calculate c i'm going to tell you that how it is calculated okay so now we say let's let me just write an important definition here calculation of m and c using actual values of x and y is known as model fitting okay fitting the model okay so if i say the statement fit the linear regression if i say this then i mean that i'm going to give you the actual values of x and y and you need to calculate m and, m and c so there is a there, there is a function which we use known as fit function which we will be using over regression and you are going to understand that okay so there will be a fit function which we will be using now so let me just quickly save this graph for you in case if there is any question till now you can quickly ask me there is no question on the sheet now now let me just tell you how you are going to calculate this y is equal to m into x plus there are two ways you can mathematically compute the equation 
as well as you can use an already existing api so that's where sk learn comes in so if you want to use any equation like this if you if you want to use an equation like this then what you can do is you can make use of this library sk learn we have this library sk learn we have this library stats models so we can use these libraries in order to implement mathematical equations in programming okay you don't need to do the hard work but the understanding would be much appreciated and you will be able to work better if you if you understand the equation but these models can quickly help you out in calculation of all these values without any hassle so now let me tell you so what are we going to do so till now is it clear to all the participants is it is it going over over the head <laughs> yeah okay so we have to check the time as well that is fine okay that's time check okay okay so i think everything everything has reached to you all till now so not a problem so tomorrow what we'll do is uh, tomorrow as in in the next session on monday we can start from this implementation of regression over the data so as to make a prediction model and predict over it is that fine till now okay thank you so much so in the next session we will help you out with how to implement this mathematical equation to predict marks on the basis of our studied and on the basis of unknown variables so that you will be ready with the first model and once you are done with that then we will take you to a real data of housing modified which whose link i have already given to you so we are going to read it we are going to perform machine learning on it and we are going to grab a lot more information from it thank you so much for the day thank you so much for being available and if you have any queries you can quickly post your queries on chat as well as on our facebook comments or you can also visit hackweather.ca and you can write in your queries in that talk to mentor box moreover if you have uh, uh, your task is to complete all these scripts and update in your trello cards so make sure you are updating trello as well because that will help you in later run so thank you so much for the day